Good morning, everyone. My name is Paco, and here we are at Coffee and Headlines, our daily morning live get together where we exchange and share news stories, headlines of things that are going on around the world, places far away from us, places nearby, and how they affect our lives here in Puerto Vallarta. If you're new, please feel free to leave your name, and rather, please feel free to say new in your comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And um, and today is a complicated day because there's all kinds of complicated things going on, um, more so in the way I want to deliver a story that is coherent, because today is the final day of the safe distance campaign in Mexico. And um, it's the end of 94 days of crazy. It all started in Mexico on February 27th. Uh, it's the date in which the first case was detected in the country. Um, it was some dude that had come back from Italy uh, uh, from a business trip. Um, March 23rd, the stay-at-home campaign began. And uh, that's when we got our first slap on the face as to what was going on. We had just finished or we had just had a long weekend in Mexico. We were already aware of what was going on around the world. And, uh, and that's when the shit hit the fan in Mexico. This is the date in which we realized, okay, this is really happening. Between then and now, we had Mother's Day. And we saw a ton of people disregard guidelines for staying at home. And we saw the numbers reflect the consequences of that disregard. And of course, now um, we've come to the end of the campaign. And, um, and here we are. You know, what's going to happen next? What's, gonna, what's, what's life going to be like? Well, it's all kind of scary because we still don't know what's going to happen. Uh! But we're going to deliver the news in the most positive way today, as we always do, and we're going to try to make as much sense as possible. Um, I'm not going to go through specific hellos just yet, um, and I'm going to be looking for important questions you may have throughout the broadcast because I want to keep you up informed. As we know, well, let's start with this. As we know, we've all been waiting for uh, the new normality to begin. We've been waiting for uh, a clear understanding of how these stoplights are going to work throughout the country. And uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yesterday, the authorities in Mexico City, Hugo lopez Gatel, revealed this map. And this map shows the entire country in the red. Uh, except for one state, the state of Zacatecas. And, um, and of course, everybody's or many people's reaction to this map was kind of like, wait a second, wait a second. Um, Mexico City and the metropolitan area around Mexico City was looking really crappy. How come all of a sudden the entire country is at so-called riesgo maximo or maximum risk and what on earth does that mean really to all of us and so forth and so on well uh, here's the way this whole thing works um in his press conference hugo lopez gatel explained the level of risk as it relates to the progress of the pandemic you know when the pandemic is in the process of increasing in numbers it, that's when things get ugly, right? We knew that. And then, you know, as soon as the numbers start decreasing, then the pandemic is not as scary. We've known that Mexico City and surrounding areas and some of the most affected points in the country have been here and are now in the process of coming down. We have known that other parts of the country have had lower numbers and those of us that have been trying to remain well informed have known that it is because we're still in the climbing part of the pandemic, right? Then we've also known that our governor has been really proactive in making sure that we take good care of ourselves, has, has instituted all kinds of very specific um, 
guidelines that are exclusive to our state. And through the whole process, he has been saying, well, Jalisco is doing great because we acted um, we acted very proactively from the get go and so forth and so on. And now we have this map. Now, how does the government get to this map? Well, what the government explained in a very complicated way, and if I'm not making sense, please stop me, slap me, and I will explain because I'm trying to make sense of it myself. Okay, so this is, um, let me find it. Here it is. According to the government, um, and based on the curve, where am I? Can I get myself into this graph? No, I cannot. Okay, I'm here, but you won't be able to see me. I'm sorry. Um, according to the government, if you have been in the red, it means that the, the number of cases has been increasing or is stable at its highest number. If you are in the yellow, you have had... Um, a lower number of cases and the tendency of cases are on are going down. If you are in the orange, um, the number of cases is a little higher, but the tendency is 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 going down. And if you are in the red, that means that at least for a month, at least for a month, your state has had low numbers. Needless to say, um, we're not according to these numbers, none of the states can really be in a green zone or anything other than a red zone because the virus is still just peaking throughout Mexico. Now, Hugo lopez Gatel said um, in his... No, wait a second. Let me come back. Es verdaderamente increíble. No, not that one. Increíble. This one. I need to come over to this other graph to make sense. Please bear with me because this is really tricky. Ah, okay, here we go. Um, let me find my headlines. Here we go. Okay, so according to the government, how do they get to determine what color anybody is in? These are their parameters, okay? Um, there's activities that are non-essential and there's activities that are essential, and these are categorized by their value, their social value, and how how important they are to our economy. And then they are categorized by the number of people that are involved in these activities. In other words, if there are factories in, um, in places where a lot of people are, gonna, are going to gather together, then it becomes risky. Um, and so the bottom line is based on these equations and numbers and things that the government has not explained very clearly, boom, the government decided, okay, so we are all in the red. And being in the red means that we continue to be at super high risk and the, the, the stoplight is means that we continue to be in essential activities only, um, and we've known what that means because we've looked at the chart a number of times. Well, meanwhile, um, our president announced that um, he is going to start doing his own political campaigning and he's touring around the country because he needs to go start the, um, the, the construction of his Mayan train project. So the governors got these messages and the way they interpreted them was along the lines of, okay, so the whole country is doing lousy, despite the fact that our states were doing, they look good on the graph. And now you're giving us the responsibility to monitor what's next. And meanwhile, the president of the republic is going on a political tour. So what was the governor's reaction? Not very, not very good. Yesterday, there was a meeting in Colima, just south of Puerto Vallarta, in which the governors of Tamaulipas, Nuevo León, Michoacán, Coahuila, Durango, Jalisco, and Colima got together. Um, as you can see from this photograph, they were all going to head to a white party afterwards because they're all dressed in white. And they got together and they spoke among themselves and they essentially gave the government, the federal government, the finger. They said, we reject your appraisal 
that our states have are now showing in the red. We don't understand why you think they're showing in the red. Um, so we manifest our deep in con um, our deep our deep rejection to a stoplight that does not reflect the reality of our states. Uh, quite the contrary, it would seem that it, this has a political purpose to um, delegate responsibility to the different states for the diseased ones. So the governors um, reacted again very, very um, negatively about this. Our governor, who has been known as being very, um, very vocal, had the following to say, and I'm going to play this video. It's a four minute video. And because it would have taken me much longer to subtitle it than to translate it, I'm going to translate it as I go. Here we go. No, not that one. I wanted to show you that graph about the new normal, but I'll come back to that in a second. Es verdaderamente increíble. Increíble. El nivel de cinismo del señor López Gatel. Lo the level of cynicism um, shown by Hugo López Gatel is truly, truly incredible. Con todas sus letras. Ahora nos quiere echar a los estados la responsabilidad. Now he wants to blame all our states with the responsibility de iniciar un proceso de reactivación de la economía of starting a process of economy reactivation. Porque ya pintó de manera automática a todo el país de rojo. But he has already painted the whole country in Presentaron red. el mapa. Todo he el país. Déjenme decirles lo que nos mandaron. Por eso digo que el nivel de cinismo es extraordinario. Let me show you what they sent us so that you can see why the level of cynicism is so extraordinary. Déjenme decirles lo que nos mandaron a los gobernadores después de la videoconferencia. This is what they sent the governors after the, the video eh, conference last week. Respecto al semáforo este que iban a presentar. Regarding the stoplight that Jalisco, they were going to present. En específico, in Jalisco specifically, Dijeron, déjenme empezar por el principio. Let me start from the beginning. Dicen que van a medir para su semáforo cuatro indicadores. They say that they're going to use four indicators for their stoplight. Cuatro indicadores. Four indicators. Punto número uno. Number one. De esos cuatro indicadores, of those four indicators, que ellos miden, que no sabemos ni cómo midan ni nada, pero that they measure, but we have no freaking clue as to how they measure them. But anyway, <laughs> sus cuatro indicadores. Their four indicators. En dos de los cuatro. In two Jalisco of the four, aparece en verde. Aquí está la información que me mandaron. Jalisco appears in the green. This is the information that they sent. Directamente, para que no haya malos entendidos. I'm showing you this so that there's no misunderstanding. En dos de los cuatro, Jalisco está en verde. In two of the four, Jalisco is in the green. En uno de los in, cuatro, in one Jalisco of the está four, en amarillo. Jalisco is in the yellow. Aquí está el otro. Dos en verde, uno en amarillo. Two in green, one in yellow. Y otro, el de nivel de riesgo por tendencia de hospitalización es el único. And then the fourth one, the one that measures risk level based on the number of hospital beds. Lo que aparece en rojo. Is the only one that shows up in red. Vamos, es decir, son cuatro indicadores y dice. So there are four indicators. Finalmente, nivel de riesgo general tomando en cuenta los cuatro indicadores. Es decir, and it says, we're going to give you a color based on all four indicators. Título de la tabla, que es la que presentaron hoy. That's the name of the rojo. graph that they showed today. Explican? And it shows everybody in red. How can you explain that? Eso. Si Jalisco tiene de cuatro indicadores, dos en verde, uno en amarillo y uno en rojo, ¿por qué salimos en rojo? <laughs> if Jalisco has four indicators and we have two in green, one in red and one in yellow, why did we come up yellow? I mean, why did we come up red? He's really pissed. O sea, ni eh, con sus interminables explicaciones técnicas puede sostener esta idea. Not even with all his endless explanations, technical explanations, can he explain this? Pues en realidad, esta visión del país no es correcta, no todo. In reality, this vision of our country is not accurate. Estamos igual. We're not Ahora the resulta same. que nosotros estamos igual en el mismo color que la Ciudad de México. Now it turns out that we're in the same color as Mexico City. No puede ser. It la, can't be true. Eh, por eso creo this que is why I think ha sido muy desafortunado todo este manejo. Yo ayer... That all this handling has been truly, truly unfortunate. Yesterday... 
eh, le expresé mi opinión respecto a este tema al secretario Marcelo Ebrard. I, I shared my opinion with uh, Mexico's Chancellor Marcelo Ebrard. Le transmití mi preocupación I por estos concern, mensajes cruzados, pero vuelvo a lo mismo, ya no vamos a polemizar. Messages, but I go back to the same. We're not going to be able to use this. Eh, han hecho las cosas así, They've ahora se quieren way. lavar las manos, Now they want to wash their hands. nos quieren echar la bronca a los gobernadores, they want to que throw nos... the responsibility to the governors. nos hagamos responsables, pero lo más terrible de todo es que así ha sido durante los dos meses. But the worst thing of all is that this is the way it's been for the past couple of months. Los estados estamos solos the states, la emergencia. we are on our own handling the emergency. If this is getting boring, just let me know. We've got about a minute to go. Esa es la realidad. That's the reality. Y, pues es muy triste so, que really el encargado sad. de coordinar los esfuerzos para enfrentar la emergencia sanitaria It's really sad that the person that is in charge to coordinate the efforts to handle the sanitary emergency se dedique de esa manera, insisto, tan cínica is so cynic, a, such a cynic generar este ambiente de confrontación y de distanciamiento. In the way he generates or he fosters this environment of confrontation and distancing from the states. Nosotros no solamente no nos interesa estar no. en una disputa con la federación. We're not interested in arguing with the federation. Queremos coordinarnos. We want to coordinate Pero ante una cosa como esta que acabamos But if you, we look at something like this, de ver, pues qué podemos decir? What can we say? Nos mandan esto. They send us this. Eh, en un archivo. In an archive. Nos han llamado. They haven't even called. No nos contestan las llamadas. They don't Bárbara answer the phone. Tiene desde el día de ayer buscando al funcionario que nos dijeron que era con el que íbamos a revisar el semáforo. We've been trying to get in touch with the dignitary that is supposed to coordinate the stoplight with us. Y ahora deciden, And por decreto del señor Gatel, que todo el país está igual. No. By decree of Hugo López Gatel, that the whole country is in the red. Ponen a Jalisco en el mismo color que a la Ciudad de México. Jalisco, the same color as Mexico. Perdón, pero simplemente no estamos de acuerdo. I'm sorry, but Así we're, de sencillo. we're as simple as this. We don't agree with this. It's that simple. Jalisco seguirá. Eh, la estrategia y la ruta que hemos ido construyendo de la mano de la Universidad de Guadalajara, de nuestros... Jalisco will continue the path that we've been developing alongside with the Guadalajara University. Especialistas, de nuestros académicos y tomando las decisiones que consideremos más correctas para nuestro estado. And making the decisions that are... Es verdaderamente incorrecto. Oops, make, and taking decisions that are correct for our state. So this is... Um, I had to show this because it's really intense. It's the first time that I see him get so verbal and so ugly about Hugo lopez Gatel. And, uh, and this was the spirit of all these governors that met in the state of Colima. Everybody, all the governors are, you know, their states have different circumstances, but these governors have been working together for quite some time. The states of Tamaulipas, Nuevo León, Michoacán, Coahuila, Durango, Jalisco, and Colima, and have pretty much announced that they're going to do things their own way. Now, what does that mean? And that's the, the tricky part. We don't know yet completely. We don't know yet certainly, uh, with all kinds of certainty. Why? Because yesterday also there was a meeting of the health committee of the state of Jalisco. And the health committee of the state of Jalisco essentially said to our governor, you know what? We were hoping that people wouldn't be so stupid, but people have been stupid and people have been going out and people have not been safe distancing. And now we want to do a couple of things. Number one, we want to recommend, this is not, it has not been approved, but the, the health um, committee in Jalisco wants to recommend that this phase zero that we're still on, that is supposed to end on Monday, that it be uh, continued until the 15th of the month. They also want to recommend that every single um, business that has opened and is has not opened appropriately that every single business that has not opened appropriately be shut down immediately so on that um a couple of things happen number one the governor who was supposed to give a statement yesterday about how things would unfold he said yesterday almost 24 hours ago he said uh since the beginning of the day our health committee has been a gathering and they've been working in the analysis of the situation if, uh, of the pandemic 
At noon, they will offer a press conference that is very important for people in Jalisco. This is why the message that I had scheduled to publish in my social media page is going to be postponed until, well, the message says until the day of tomorrow. But of course, we know that is today. In other words, in the morning yesterday, he was all ready to go. The health committee in in Jalisco got together and started looking at things and realized, well, things are not as rosy as we thought they were. So the governor asked to postpone his his final announcement, which now is going to happen at some point during the day. In the meantime, are you getting all of this? I tell you, I couldn't sleep last night. I got insomnia this morning. I woke up at five o'clock in the morning because I had to try to make more sense of, of all this stuff. So, of course, yesterday also Alfaro came forward and said uh, to all the the mayors in the metropolitan area in Guadalajara, if you find a business that has screwed up, that is not following the guidelines, just shut them down, period. He will have absolutely no tolerance for that. So this is what's been going on in Guadalajara. Um, What has been happening in Guadalajara, just as an aside, is that when restaurants said, okay, we can open, or when restaurants were told we can open at 50% capacity and serve cocktails with um, with your meal, um, a lot of people misinterpreted or interpreted as, well, yeah, we can go out and hang out again. You know, we can see our friends and stuff like that. And, and that's not what this is about. You know, we can go and have a nice meal at a restaurant and be there for an hour or two and then come back home and stay home. However, everywhere, everywhere you look, the increase in movement has been noticed uh, through the digital applications. The increase in traffic has been noticed. So clearly, we're not being as good citizens as we should be. So, um, so that's why there's been all this uncertainty. Then at the same time, we also learned that starting on Monday, the state has acquired um, 26,000 rapid tests for detection of COVID-19. And this is important to know for a couple of reasons. We know that on the one hand, part of the guidelines uh, will expect that business owners will pay for some of the testing for some of their staff. You are business owners, you know those details much better than I do. So um, the state of Jalisco has been trying from the very beginning of the pandemic to buy its own rapid tests. And first it was roadblocked by federal government. Now, finally, Jalisco has said, again, the state is elegantly giving the federal government the, the finger and has said, well, we're going to do our own testing and we're going to start on Monday. Um, so in this very convoluted delivery, and I apologize if I didn't organize this in a better way, the bottom line is, according to some hard to understand parameters coming from Mexico City, the whole country is in the red. Now, I can kind of understand that from a scientific point of view, because I know that I've looked at the curve and I know looking at where the cases are increasing or diminishing, I can see how excuse me, some parts of the country are higher than others. I get that. I also get the part that Jalisco is still in the rise. And we know that we've been looking at the numbers lately. I mean, the number of cases in Puerto Vallarta is increasing. Um, We know, at least intellectually, that there's still a long ways to go. Um, However, apparently the way all this information has been handled from the federal government and the way they've handled the information out to the states has been not in the in a nicest spirit of communication, apparently. Um, Because on the one hand, we have the governor saying, you know, they just sent us some papers and that's it. They didn't give any explanations. They're not returning our calls, et cetera, et cetera. But last night, Hugo lopez Gatel on his nightly conference very specifically contradicted that. He said, we had a meeting with the governors via Zoom last week and we explained to them that if three out of the four parameters look bad, then you look bad. So again, It's all tricky, difficult to understand. The only thing I can tell you is that not much is changing, not much has changed, not much will change on Monday. If we were explaining Monday, if we were expecting Monday to be some kind of really different day in terms of what we can or cannot do, 
that ain't going to happen. If we were expecting Monday to be a day in which we can go out more, that's not going to happen. Um, I assume that businesses that have their sticker are going to be able to open uh, without a problem. But, um, but as far as to how our governor is going to interpret the federal stoplight or the federal guidelines and modify them for our state, that still remains to be seen. And that ends our formal headlines today. I want to look at some of your comments because <clears throat> I want to make sure that we are navigating this uncertainty and lack of clarity together. And again, um, let me take a quick look. Uh, oh my God, there's 121 of you here. So nice to see so many people. Uh, again, not enough time, I'm afraid, um, to do the casual hellos. Let me just focus on what's important. David says, my heart goes out to you guys down in PV. Thank you very much. Um, what will be the direction from the governor? Well, clearly, the only thing we know for certain is that when he goes to meetings, he wears white shirts. Anything above that, Claude, we are <laughs> figuring out on the go. Um, I love your approach. Well, I, I am well medicated, Wade. Uh, that's the only way I can handle this. But today is going to be a siesta day. I kind of know that for sure. Um, we are in the red in two ways, COVID and fiscally. Yes, we know that. And uh, at least one of the governors in this press uh, conference that they had yesterday said that the worst pandemic is coming, and that is the economic pandemic. Um, I completely agree with you. Uh, love the po yeah, white party, white party. I don't know if they're pre or they're pan or, or what political party they belong to, but clearly they belong to the white party party. Um, gotta love the white party. Oh yes, thank you. Oh my God, the white party is popular. Yeah, let's have a fracking white party. Um, everybody wants a white party. Jesus, you guys. Does being in the red mean that we're not opening up in on June 1st? Rene, if we look at the stoplight, uh, if you remember the stoplight, do I have the stoplight graphic around? Uh, I showed it just a couple of days ago. It was the very explicit graph with the activities that were allowed. I don't have it handy, but the red light, if I recall correctly, means that essentially we are in the same place as we have been. Only essential activities can open. And I'm really sorry I can be more specific because I don't understand it myself. Um, oh, Cheryl thinks that they ran out of green ink. That's entirely possible. It's entirely possible that they didn't even notice. So confusing. I agree. Um the protest has started. Oh, is this uh, the, the, the protest that was going to go on in, in Puerto Vallarta? I think I read somewhere that it ended up being a car protest. So if you say that people are honking, that must be what it is. Um, no way boring. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Um, uh, thank you very much again for that. Today is a tricky day because I want to make as much sense as possible. Um, um, again, Paul... I understand statisticians, and I understand that the progression of a pandemic has a lot to do with, um, with following numbers and understanding them, but this is as crazy and difficult to understand as, as it gets. Um, Pam is collecting more PPE. Yes, yes, because the numbers are on the rise, and we've known this. Um, Yes, da, 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 da. not really sure. I plan on investigating after Paco's broadcast. Stacy, if you find out something that I don't know, please let me know or share it with us because we will be very, very much appreciative of it. Um, and this is very true, um, Chris. This is very true. Unfortunately, um, politicians are caught between health and economics and, 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 and politics. Um, we are on our own and we'll need to just use our common sense when it comes to our health. Louis, that is the wisest thing you could say because at the bottom of all of this, the first, the first agreements that we need to make come from ourselves and are for ourselves. I have some friends that are 
in the red because their attitude to this whole thing is almost on the verge of paranoia. And we need to respect that. We need to respect the boundaries that each person creates. And then I have other friends that are very carefree. Um, and I respect that too. So the first thing, the first rule of thumb is we need to be at peace with ourselves and the decisions we make for ourselves. Even if something that the government suggests is more relaxed, hey, we all need to make those decisions. Um, <clears throat> for those of us who know oh, who own our own business, we need to know if we are okay to do so. Well, Cheryl, again, I would imagine that if you went through your process, you got your sticker, you're good to go, then you should be good to go. Thank you for that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Are those tests going to cost the businesses? Um, well, again, I don't know exactly. When we talked about COVID-19 uh, rapid tests uh, done by private businesses, uh, I remember that the commentary had something to do with the fact that if you have less than 100 employees, then you go through the Jalisco system. You call the toll-free number and they set up an appointment for your employee that has suspicious symptoms. If you have more than 100 employees, then you have to co-sponsor or co-pay or somehow procure the tests yourself. Or at least that's what we reported about a week and a half ago. Everything could have changed. If it does, please don't blame the messenger. Um, we have a lengthy, a lengthy report here. Um, there was a floor map for cleansing. Our feet and temperature was taken. Yeah, that's the experience that I had yesterday at Hotel Mercurio. There are some places that are already following their guidelines. Yesterday, I stopped by Hotel Mercurio to conduct some business. Um, and, you know, I had to stand on a special mat. And I found out that I had seven, 37 degrees uh, Celsius. So they let me in. So I see that businesses are starting to do what they're supposed to do. But it's, again, it's it's confusing. It's it's difficult to explain. Um, thank you, Mari, for that. Um, any thoughts on non-essential items being available? That's a great question, Barbara. Again, because I thought that starting on Monday, I would be able to just go to Walmart and get my underwear. <laughs> I need my undies. I need a new vacuum cleaner for my maid that I think is coming back next week, but I don't even know if she is because I don't, I don't understand. And again, I'm sorry if I'm not being clearer or, or nicer about this, but it's it's I I don't know. I don't know. Just pray for my underwear and I'll pray for whatever non-essentials you need to get. Um, Eddie doesn't know of any businesses that have received their sticker. I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, thank you very much, Ellen. We're trying our damnedest. Um, does this change anything for you in terms of? Does this change anything for me? You're asking me, Evelyn? Well, I mean, my decision for myself is I go about going out carefully. I wear my face mask. I go to two or three restaurants that I know I want to support and that I know don't get very crowded. I don't go out for anything other than the shopping that I want to do. If I go out, I go out to the mountains where there's nature and nothing and nobody else. Um, and if I get bitten by an iguana, well, that's my risk. You know, if I get bitten by a bunch of noceums, that's my risk. But, you know, for me, life continues to be a life of confinement. And I'm sure that it continues to be a life of confinement for a lot of people. Um, are condos with rentals under the same rules as hotels? I have no idea. Not everyone can stay home. This is true. This has been the case for some time, and we know this. And I think that's part of a very difficult uh, balancing act that the government and the health departments have have to face. You know, and this is very true. There are a lot of people that need to go out um, to 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 do their thing. Um, let's see, uh, when will the government search about solution of andrus dioxide chloride arsenic? Um, I'm not sure that I follow this. It must have to, something to do with the, the ingredients that they have suggested you have to use for cleaning. Um, yes, this is something to feel bad about, Paul, and I feel very bad about that. You know, I cannot save 
the whole city or the whole state. Nobody can, which is why I am making very specific choices of supporting businesses that I can with my limited budget. And, um, and that's, that's my contribution. More importantly, I try to support friends in their projects. And we'll get to that in a second when we get into the leisurely stuff. And yes, we have to have a, at least two or three leisurely things for a little bit of balance. Uh, yes, we do what we can to support whoever we can, and that's that's the best we can do. Um, my cousin Cecilia, it's nice to read you, prima, como estas? People have the right to do whatever around COVID-19, but we are the ones who want to take care of ourselves, have the right not to be contagious. This is true. This is true. I mean, and that's the conundrum of this virus. You know, if you can say, you know, I don't give a shit about the guidelines. I am going to do that because of the nature of the virus. The virus, you can carry it without even knowing it. So even if you make decisions for yourself and then you go and, and have to go to the bank or have to go to the grocery store, you could spread the virus to the people at the grocery store and and not even know it. And while you thought you were exercising your right, you know, what about the people that want to exercise their right to not be the recipients of the virus? So it is a tricky thing. It is a very, very tricky thing. Um, Logan, thank you very much for keeping my underwear in your thoughts and prayers. I'm going to go commando starting next week. I mean, I don't care. There's not much to find down there anyway. Um, is that what you call it? Is it commando when you don't wear any underwear? I know there's a, an expression called visible penis line, but that's not what I'm intending to do here. Um, can we vote for Paco? <laughs> you guys, really? Seriously? You deserve one of those. Um, Margaret is not opening until July, but the registration site has been down for days, probably swamped with uh, people wanting to open by June 1st. Margaret, when you open your beautiful... Uh, Quinta Maria Cortez in Casa Tres Vidas, let me know because we want to, you know, you're a, you're a hotel, so there's only so much we local, locals can do to promote you. But if you come up with some interesting events in which we can help promote what you're doing, let me know. Let's work something out. This is what, when we were somebody was talking earlier about how do we support local businesses, that's what we do. We find creative ways to support one another. Um can you share a place to go out of town in the mountains? Let me put something together and I'll be happy to do that tomorrow. I will be do, be happy to do that tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday fun day where nothing is sacred um, and um, we'll include some of that. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> that's okay, Louise. Um, I'll stick to coffee. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You guys are getting silly. And I love the fact that you're getting silly because this means that along with me, you realize that while these are important, thought-provoking, frustrating, sad, complicated circumstances, if we let them get the best of us, of our attitude, our mindset, our well-being, our blood pressure, and our wine consumption, things are going to get even uglier. And with that thought in mind, let me share at least two or three leisurely things with you today because it is Saturday, it is the weekend, and tomorrow is Sunday fun day. Okay, as you know, we are all here about supporting new businesses, new projects, small people, people that just are getting started. Well, one of such businesses was mentioned in the show the other day, and it is called Farm Fresh PV. Somebody mentioned that the nice folks at Farm Fresh PV uh, made a delivery, and they did that very successfully. So yesterday, I get a message from the nice folks from Farm Fresh PV. And they say to me, well, what can you do for us? Promote us, promote us. I'm like, well, I don't even know who you are. I thought to myself, you know, I mean, I see that these people are new and I see that they're dealing with produce and I figure, okay, produce, there's a connection between that and the audience, which is local English speaking folk that are enjoying the best of the city the best way they can. So I said to the guy, of course, we'd love to help because first and foremost, we are here about helping others. How can we help you? And he says, well, write an article. I'm like, I don't know you. Well, 
bring us to the show. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. If you have somebody that speaks English, I'll bring you to the show. So long story short, Farm Fresh PB is coming on an interview. It's coming live next week to tell us about their products and services. But here's where I need your help because I don't know them very well, but we want to support them. I would like to invite you, if you have had any connection with them, if you've shopped from them, et cetera, et cetera, and you've had a good experience or a bad experience, please get in touch with me. Send me a message or leave a comment here because we want to be as helpful as we can to help a new business develop a clientele. Of course we do. But also, we don't want to we don't want to shut them down or turn our, our back on them because they maybe didn't get a delivery okay or there was a, a bad situation or something. So if there has been an ugly, we want to hear about it so we can ask them. You know, when they come live, we're going to say, okay, tell us what you're about. Tell us how you'll be getting started and what happened with those tomatoes that were supposed to be bananas. And that way, we'll get a chance to find out what they're about. We'll get a chance to find out if they are really committed to their customers. And we'll decide together whether we like them or not. How does that sound? If that sounds like a good deal, let me know. If you'd like for things to be handled differently, let me know. All I want is to make sure that our spaces, whether it is this daily broadcast or um, the space we, we share or the com information that we share on the website remain as transparent and as clear and as pro-consumer as possible. And that's just my hope. Um, yes, at the beginning of today's broadcast, somebody mentioned that we are just hours away from the space launch. I am excited. Uh, the space launch is going to be at 322 Eastern. So that's going to be 222 local time, I think. So we'll be watching. Of course, I'm going to give you the link again to the SpaceX website, and I'm going to give you a link to the YouTube, or I believe we just share those, and, and this will be easy to find. Um, last but not least, uh, speaking of space, I'm going to leave you the trailer to a new television series that is uh, has just been launched on Netflix, and it's called Space Force, and it is, it is a parody or a comedy starring Steve Carroll in which the United States decides to launch um, a space program to defend the planet from God knows what. And from what I understand, there is a very, um, there are some very specific hints between the, the content of the show and the way the current government in the United States is unfolding. So, why am I sharing this? Well, because it's the weekend and I think we all need a little bit of, of, of reasons to laugh. Um, and I thought you might enjoy this. Um, a last quick look at your comments before we head out. Um, and as always, um, I thank you so much for keeping me company. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's always a great day when we are on this side of the grass. Um, that's cryptic because I can think of a lot of grasses, Cheryl Novak. And coming from you who has made fun at me and my tennis balls, I actually don't know what you mean. And that's probably okay. Uh, oh, this is great to know, Chris. This is wonderful. I am so happy to hear this. Uh, Luis, yes, we talked about that because you shared the link with us here the other day and they remembered, they, they, they remembered you, um, uh, so it's a comedy then. What? I don't know if you're referring, Paul, to Space Force, the series on Netflix, or if you're referring to the Mexican political system or the pandemic. Um, but yes, it is all a comedy. What can I say? Um, I love you back. Sunday, fun day tomorrow. Yes, we know that. And nothing is going to be sacred. And with that note, I think it's a good time to end our broadcast today. I'm sorry it was so crazy and confusing. I try to make things as palatable as possible, but I can tell you that I'll be keeping track of what unfolds tomorrow in terms of the latest announcements from the governor. I will resist as much as I can any kind of important hard note from tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday fun day. But of course, if there's something that needs to be brought up to your attention, I will be so very happy to do it because I understand as you do that Monday's coming, and one way or another, Monday is going to be a different day. 
And uh, it's going to be a different day and the beginning of a bunch of different days that eventually will feel like what they're calling it, the new normal. Between now and then, just stay happy, stay smiling, stay healthy, and stay in touch with everyone you love, and stay in touch with me. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.